10, 9, ignition sequence start, 6. Hello, and welcome to Rocket Fuel, your daily update of everything that's happening in the Rocket Pool community. My name is Wack. Today is September 13th, and uh, we've got a quick episode for you all today, so let's get started here with this bi-weekly update. So Maverick said, hey everyone, the latest bi-weekly update is here, so we're going to check that out soon. This is also, um, so is this week's community call, and there's a link to that on Twitter. And then he says, an important update from me, it's time to pass the torch. Going forward, feel free to tag Grant instead of me in the Discord when people reach out for a team contact or business development for business development or partnership purposes. And then he said Rocket Pool. So then there's a link to the bi-weekly. But before that, let's have a look at this um, community call from Singapore. So um, I didn't have a chance to listen to this yet because it took place at like 5 a.m. Eastern time, I think, something like that. So um, I wasn't able to listen. But um, if you uh, listen to it, then let me know what was said and I'll give an update in tomorrow's episode. Um, if you didn't listen to it, then go and check it out. Um, I think the team was talking about the experience with the conference so far and um, I seen Vitalik as well, of course, uh, at the at the booth, which was really cool. Okay, let's, let's have a look at the bi-weekly update. So this is dated from yesterday. Um, he says, uh, Mav says that the annualized supply of our ETH is up 57%. Annualized mini pool count is up 19%. Um, that's annualized. And then... Um, Wait, that doesn't make sense because if the mini pool count grew 2.6%, then that should be annualized to close to over 100%. Maybe I'm misreading that. Maybe I made a mistake. And then the node operator count increased um, annualized growth rate of 21%, sorry, 28%. So that's going up too. We hit 3,200 node operators, which is a really lovely landmark. Smart node, latest version is 1.10.2. Um, and then there's um, client updates after that as well that you can check out um, that I've talked about on Rocket Fuel before. Um, it says R&D, the team has been busy preparing for and attending events in Singapore. Um, the work continues on treasury management for the Houston upgrade, the RETH calculator and the new website. So there's a lot of stuff still happening there. With governance, there's a whole lot going on with the GMC that I've been covering on Rocket Fuel already. There's an RPIP for on-chain PDAO governance. A report was shared that details various powers and authorities within Rocket Pool based on community documentation. There was a lot of discussion about the effective RPL and its impact on voting. And there was a comprehensive post um, that discussed MEV theft in context of potential future for ETH mini pools. Well, that's a pretty good one. Um, and then uh, feedback was sought about um, a rescue node across durations and then access durations, whether you should only have four periods of 15 days or, you know, six periods of 10 days, etc. And also access for um, solo uh, solo validators to the, to the um, rescue node as well. And then with integrations, there's stuff about base, balancer, um, the vaults that uh, we covered with the intern, which was on Sega. Um, and then we had um, Granary, had Areth on Arbitrum, um, Auras, Drops now supports Auras, Areth, WETH pool, um, a yield farming protocol now supports Areth, a uh, beta product was released featuring our ETH, but also be always be careful and do your own research before engaging with DeFi protocols. Vendor Finance supports Pendle's our ETH and um, Aura launched coin incentivized rewards on Optimism. Um, then we have um, stuff about Singapore with the conferences, meetings, events, networking. Uh, Langers has several presentations and panel appearances and Vitalik called in to say hi. Bell curved Give an update on Rocket Pool's contributions to Origin and Liquid Staking. Langers participated in panel discussion on staking rewards. LST5 Summit uh, can participate in panel discussion at Permissionless in Austin on behalf of the protocol. Twitter Spaces included a special restaking community call and an interview with a guest from Flashbots. And Rocket Pool was listed, uh, the RPL token was listed on Bebop, um, UZX, and Please remember to do your own research on exchanges. So thank you for that update, Mav. Um, and of course, you know, if there's any business opportunities now going forward or partnerships, then reach out to Grant for those instead of to Mav. Okay, um, next we had some updates from Joe, who was here talking about um, all the things that need to happen to get Houston and Saturn out of the door. Um, it was a discussion that was kind of going on yesterday um, 
and um, talking about when things would happen and how things would happen and um, here's what um, Joe said was keep in mind I still have uh, to maintain version 1 and that's of the smart node stack because they're working on version 2 um, and do all of the Houston stuff and then I have paternity leave so it's not like version 2 will be here tomorrow someday we'll have another dev working on stuff someday cue Disney song about dreaming uh, to the future or something and then a non-fungible Yoakum says, so Houston might be in January then. And Joe says, that's doubtful. The audits would have to be done crazily fast and find literally nothing for that to even be on the table. Um, and then a non-fungible Yoakum says, so Houston smart note stuff done, then paternity leave and Houston sometime in the spring. And uh, Joe says, that seems a reasonable plan. They want me to do the smart node before it goes to audit this time instead of building in parallel though so once i get back from singapore it's going to be category five um category five cat typing time um and then um jasper says as always rocket pool is understaffed so saturn would be at the end of next year oof um and he um, joe says that it can't even start production until four seven eight eight so yeah um so non fungible Yoakum says, my conservative guess for Dancun isn't until January. The core devs are still chewing on dev nets and long-term test nets aren't even on the horizon yet. So it looks like that, you know, the idea for October or November for um, the Cancun and Dinab isn't looking likely maybe at this time. Um, and then in relation to the 4788 stuff, Vasper says, um, oh, sorry, Valdov says, um, significant uh, i called him vasper like jasper and valdo sorry <laughs> valdo says uh, significant bits can be done especially since the beaten root bit is like um we do optimistic stuff and challenge so essentially it's just an api to submit a thing and it says success of succeeded or failed the actual details should only affect a module that does the checking and joe says i'm talking more about the uh, mega pool implementation um, if it includes LEB4 support, then it needs to be forced exits too. Um, and uh, Val is saying, yeah, uh, I'm saying we should be able to do that design and coding regardless of 4788 details or forced exit. Just need to know we'll have them. And then uh, Joe says maybe Kane will know more. And then we have some more updates from Joe. Um, and here he's... Um, rewriting some um, APIs. And he says, uh, version 2, ladies and gentlemen. And then um, you know, Blue AVM says, what is version 2? And Joe says, the smart node version 2 is a complete rewrite of um, of the smart node stack. And Blue AVM says, whoa, is it web app based? And Joe says, it will come with a web server so someone can write a web app for it, but it won't come up with a web app because that's outside my skill set. It will still have a command line interface which just talks to the server under the hood. And then Joe says, uh, sorry, Blue AVM says, we'll also be um, drafting API which external folks use and draft apps around it. And Joe says it'll be notably, noticeably faster, easier on the execution client and able to do fun things like submit transactions in batches or run them via flashbots for revert protection. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Blue AVM says, are we deprecating version 1 post Houston? And Joe says, I don't know when that will be done. I have to build version 1 with Houston support. Um, and this is the same time. I doubt it will be ready when Houston gets released. Um, and Blue AVM says, we seriously need a helping hand for Joe to do this heavy lifting. Um, and Never an Island says, uh, so it's basically a single API for your um, execution layer, consistency layer, VC, flashbots, etc. And um, Joe says, not really. It doesn't do all the things those APIs do and just marry them together. Like the smart node technically has API right now. That's what the command line interface talks to and does stuff, but it's not very pretty one. Uh, like a car that can't do all the things uh, wheels can do. It, and then uh, Joe says, it's just a Docker exec. Um, rocket pool api under the hood this will change so instead of docker exec it's actually a http api the back and forth between the command line interface and this will look the same but now web stuff can use it too so there's um nice little bits of information um from from joe there about um what the next few months of work are going to look like for him um some information on timelines that sadly um put a pessimistic spin on some people's expectations but um yeah, thank you as always to Joe for providing the updates because they're really good. 
Okay, next we had this discussion um, that started with Peter Celedy. I'm, I know that's a horrible pronunciation. I'm really sorry about that. Um, that's 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 from Patches. Sorry, Patches. I know that I did a worse job of it than you said. But anyway, um, Peter here from the Get team. Thanks, Invis, um, and the uh, Ethereum. Um, Ethereum uh, developer, core developer, says, Hey, Rocket Pool, is it possible, okay, I mean semi, semi elegantly, to manually spin up your infrastructure containers? My setup um, is an unraid server running Docker containers. I don't want custom scripts or Docker Compose to set up everything. Rather, I would like to manually compose stuff. Just what? And then Darren uh, uh, Langers here says, "Hey, yes, you can run them natively or do a hybrid setup. Here's a native, um, here's native documentation, and then there's a link to the guide of setting up hybrid or reverse hybrid setups. And uh, he says Joe should be able to fill in the gaps also. Yes. Yeah, so then Peter says that seems extremely geared towards um, system development, I guess, system D, and does a lot of strange local user handling." I want to still be able to use Docker containers. I want to manage them for myself instead of auto be auto deployed by Rocket Pool. So then Patches comes in and says it should be possible. The main thing that will be worth keeping an eye out for is that a few of the containers want access to the Docker socket, so they can restart and monitor the other containers. You may have to reverse proxy the Docker socket for the command line interface to work as well. And Peter says, "Ugh, oh, yeah, I don't want to allow that. The infrastructure is mine. I don't want app containers to mess with my infrastructure." And then Patches says the most stripped down void in the warranty option would be to do the deposit using the smart node and then move the validator keys onto the existing VC. You could um you could you could do the deposit um in a temporary virtual machine that way and uh, pop into the Discord if you want to discuss more. So it's um wait, was there more after this? Or was that just spam? No, that was just spam. So yeah, um this is a nice little conversation. And the reason why I'm covering this is because of course, you know Peter is a is a lead at, a team lead at Ethereum. He's a core developer, like um, really knows his stuff. But I'm kind of like tying this together to a few of the other things that've been happening recently. You know, Vitalik's um, uh, speech at uh, ETH Singapore was about um, decentralizing LSTs, and on top of that, you have Vitalik visiting the booth um, and that like creating a link between um, like Ethereum core research slash development and the rocket pool there's talk of um native or sovereign lsts at ethereum level but that's years away and then peter here like you know such a high profile person trying to get involved in rocket pool there seems to be like some kind of shift happening i'm not sure exactly what that is and it's just speculation on my part but um I'm definitely going to see if uh, any more things come out of this or um, other tidbits of information start coming out but there's definitely uh um, a nice little conversation here so i thought i'd add it okay talking about ethereum development here we have um the consensus specs are changing or oh, there's ideas about changing them um and here um dap lion says um alternative to three four four eight applying max on the inbound churn or only requires to modify a single epoch a transition function so implementation complexity is low so this um here was in relation to changing how many people can come um online as stakers of course the more eth that is staked the faster new stakers can come online um, and this goes up every um I think like 20 days or something like that every 60,000 validators yeah so around 20 days at the moment I think um somewhere around those kind of numbers but I think what what happens is the the core developers want to kind of like slow that down because there's this idea that there's too much uh right now um in terms of state coming online and it's a little bit difficult for some of the clients to manage and keep everything working properly um there's just too much there's too much like communication that has to be managed and um all the different uh, validators with their attestations and um everything happening in each epoch it's just there's too much load and that's what some of the finality issues were a few months ago so um the idea of having you know like uh, the upper bound of effective stake changing on ethereum uh, would be something that removes this this issue potentially but um until then they might try to limit um limit this going on there's going to be a, a meeting with all core devs i think happening tomorrow on thursday uh, where this will be discussed so i think we'll get some more information about that um moving on to some other things next we have 
this uh, tweet from Gravitar saying uh, update on the Gravitar Ascend. Uh, Gravitar's Pro points program will be so before i continue like ascend is their like kind of a program which will give users points for using the protocol um i think what will happen is those points will then turn into uh, some kind of airdrop um of course i've talked about gravita on rocket fuel a bunch of times before but there's a specific reason why i'm mentioning this tweet today um so it said that the points program will be retroactive and time-based rewarding vessel holders rewarding grey liquidity providers and st uh, stability pool depositors and rewarding social engagement and quality content start earning now and then there's app.gravitaprotocol.com so um I want to make something really clear to you all like i've never been paid anything by gravita um, any content that i covered from gravita never was with the expectation of any future payment anything like that i never talked to ret or any of the team members about any kind of monetary um, exchange for covering gravit covering gravita on rocket fuel um, the fourth point here says you know rewarding social engagement and quality content now I don't know whether rocket fuel coverage of Gravitar will be seen as something that meets that criteria um, or not. Like, I don't know if that will make me eligible for an airdrop. If it does make me eligible for an airdrop, like, that's fine. But any coverage that I gave to Gravitar in the past was not with the intention of trying to farm any kind of airdrop through rocket fuel like i have tried to find the airdrop of course you know i opened a vessel and blah 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 that kind of stuff but um not not coverage on rocket fuel was that was not the intention of an airdrop so i want to make that clear to all of you who are watching or listening um if anyone wants to talk to me about that i'm welcome like i appreciate all questions and comments so please do reach out to me but um I just wanted you all to know that, you know, if I do get an airdrop because of rocket fuel coverage, that will be inadvertent. And it was never part of the, um, any, like there was no understanding in that happening. So, yeah. And finally, I want to issue a quick correction. So yesterday I showed this image of, um, Langers at, um, at, um Ethereum Singapore. And I said that the person in the picture with Langers was Dimitri from Lido Finance. However, that was mistaken. The person in the picture, I should have known because I know what Izzy, what Izzy looks like, is actually Izzy, who is um, freeborn on Discord and uh, you know a long-time participant in the Rocket Pool Discord, works at Lido Finance. So um, the reason why I said it was Dimitri was because Dimitri was the one who posted the picture and uh, it was actually uh, Izzy in the picture, not Dimitri. So I just want to make that clear. Uh, that, you know, Sorry about that mistake, but... Um, it, it makes sense that um, Langers and Izzy are so happy to each other see to see each other because, um, of course, you know Izzy's been a long term uh, like in community member in, in Rocket Pool. So um, on that note, I'm going to end today's episode. Thank you all for watching, listening, being part of the Rocket Fuel community, and I will see you all tomorrow with a new one. Bye.